What's going on everyone? About 62% of the S&P 500 closed down in the red today and we have a whole lot to talk about as there was some big news with Elon Musk and Tesla and the whole $56 billion pay package going on there. There's also some big news with Roaring Kitty and his multi, multi-million dollar GameStop position and we also have some uh, pretty interesting statistics to go over related to the market as a whole right now and what normally happens in situations like the one we are currently in. Either way, there is one more day left for the week, so let's make it count. Yeah, we better. You know, GameStop's starting to move. It's up 14%, and the market's doing very well here in the short term. I know that today it might not have been the best move from open, but it did uh, end up green on the S&P, up 0.2%. And like you said, there was actually the majority of the S&P that was down in the red today. Whenever we go look at the heat map, it was definitely not the best one, right? There were a couple outliers like NVIDIA and Tesla, but Google, Meta, Amazon, Berkshire, a lot of the financial stocks were down in the red again, too. Uh, there was just a lot of selling pressure today, especially early on. There was a lot of happy put players, and then throughout the day, the uh, the dip buyers started coming back in and driving prices higher, and the SPY is consolidating right at resistance. We talked about this a lot yesterday around 544. It's now like a triple top with that pre-market move today, and Mike, the SPY keeps making good new all-time highs this year, and uh, I will say this, it's been quite a bit we've seen 28 new all-time highs this year already and I don't know tomorrow might be 29 at the rate we're going but what's pretty interesting is that uh, at its current pace the S&P 500 is set to uh, crack a new all-time high 62 times for the year which would be one of the greatest years in history but you know as we know the job is not done just yet but uh, at its current pace it's looking pretty good and uh, there's just been a lot of euphoria and optimism and strength not only with just the S&P 500 but a lot of different stocks out there even like Apple as we've hit on quite a bit this week so it's good to see and we'll talk more about this uh, as the video goes on but I definitely want to showcase that showcase this because the market has been uh, pretty dang strong, which is great to see. And while that's awesome, as we all know, the stock market is not an equal place. We can see by looking at this chart here, the market cap of the five largest companies in the S&P 500 is at one of its highest levels in a long, long time. So basically the five largest companies in the S&P 500 control 24% of the market right now. We have not seen a shift this big in a very long time. And as we go back to the heat map, in the same way that the heat that the boxes on the heat map are not equal, uh, it goes hand in hand with how influential each stock is. So for example, as we can see Amazon with a giant box uh, on the heat map, it goes to show that it has a lot more influence over the market compared to a company like, let's say, Bank of America or Coca-Cola or something. Something like that and what you'll notice now more so than most other times over the market's history is that big tech stocks control the market so companies like Google Nvidia meta Apple stocks like that really run the market so it's like whether you invest into these companies for the long term whether you're bullish on them bearish on them no matter what your perspective is about them you have to pay attention to them because they run the market whether you like it or you don't so going into tomorrow and even the rest of the year keep an extra close eye on these big tech stocks because you know when they're moving up in a strong way like we've seen over like the past couple of years at this point it just drags the market higher but at the same time as we all know uh, stocks don't just magically go go up forever sometimes there are some big pullbacks and looking at these stocks more so than anything else will give you that like uh, good um, I, I don't want to say x-ray vision but that good like uh that good perspective on uh, where the flows are truly uh, standing. So either way, uh, very interesting. Yeah, it really is. You know, whenever you talk about the market, today was a perfect example for that, Mike, with how the overall market, you know, the majority of the stocks in the S&P were down in the red. But what ended up green, right? NVIDIA, Apple, Tesla, LLY, a few of the bigger tech stocks ended up pretty good in the green. And that really ended up carrying the market. And of course, there were other stocks in the green, too, like some of the healthcare stocks. But, to, but today was just a perfect example of that. And, you know, whenever you start to look at these charts, Mike, I don't know about you. I'm 
I'm starting to get the uh, the fear of a bit of a bubble starting to form. I know people have been throwing that word around quite a bit the past year, and it just keeps, you know, these stocks just keep marching higher and higher and higher. Uh, whenever you go back to some of these other stocks like Intel and you actually go back to a weekly chart, uh, you can see that there were pretty big bubbles in the early 2000s, right? I mean, this, this is almost like mimicking some of these charts that we've seen here. And sometimes, like, when these bubbles burst, they, uh, they burst in a pretty big way. Uh, it's actually pretty weird to say, Mike, but Intel still has not recovered from that bubble bursting. And this is one of the biggest tech stocks in the market here. I know that they're not like NVIDIA anymore, but they once were. All righty. Another stock we have to talk about is Tesla right now, as it has had some pretty big news this morning, and there's certainly a lot of attention with it. So basically, over the short term, there has been a bunch of concern and just worry about what is going to happen with Elon Musk's giant uh, $56 billion pay package. And as of right now, uh, Elon is set to win that vote, and uh, that's a good thing, and Tesla shareholders really like that. And while this is a good thing overall, as Elon will be, uh, I guess you could say, more closely tied to Tesla going forward, um, it's not all sunshine and rainbows because there's still a lot more that has to be done to actually get this passed. So the main thing to know with Tesla right now is that there is good short-term news as Elon uh, achieved the goals he intended to, but... Again, there's like a bumpy road ahead, but looking at Tesla in the short term, it's starting to see some bullish price action that it hasn't seen in a little while. Uh, Tesla is one of the big tech stocks that is still very influential. It has just been a lot slower over like the, I, I would just say the past year, uh, just given the change in sentiment. But again, it's starting to get some of that momentum back. So let's keep a close eye on it. Yeah, it definitely is. It's starting to come up very well off that support here around uh, like 167 to 170. And it's good to see them starting to get some hype back here to the upside. We will talk about more levels and stuff on Tesla in a little while as it is one of my plays for today. But I'm definitely going to keep watching it up here in the short term, Mike. And, you know, we're not far off from $200. So I wouldn't be surprised if maybe we came up and tested there on Tesla in the short term and maybe even a little bit higher as well. I know a lot of people like to look at the uh, daily chart and look at that overall trend line on Tesla and I wouldn't be surprised if that came back into play here sometime pretty shortly but Mike I know while Tesla has been pretty popular and while Elon's been kind of stealing the headlines the past couple days uh we can't forget about Roaring Kitty right and we've talked a lot about his options and his different positions lately and uh, it looks like he's shaking things up a bit Mike he ended up getting rid of those options he was holding Exactly. So as we know, Roaring Kitty has kind of reignited the fire with GameStop, and he has been holding a good amount of options uh, for some time now, but he actually sold a lot of those options yesterday and exchanged some of them for shares. So at the current moment, he's holding about 9 million shares worth of GameStop, and as we can see, he's up a nice uh, $51 million right now, so that's always nice to see. But uh, this is influential because we like we we were all wondering like what is he going to do with his options position and now we know he sold some of them and he exercised some of them so uh, looking at GameStop right now this has uh, sparked some new optimism with it but at the same time the stock is still pretty far off from its recent highs which uh, definitely uh, you know isn't the Thing that you want to see but at the same time it's not just getting clobbered either like it actually is holding up in a pretty decent way and as we always say the more pressure it puts on it puts on its recent highs the stronger the setup becomes um, stocks like GameStop move a lot based off of attention and hype and sentiment and just pure euphoria and emotion uh, the more extreme that is the more crazy it gets and you know that uh, has been true since GameStop started Started going crazy and it will be true as far as we can see but looking at GameStop right now it is starting to get a little bit momentum off of this position update but at the same time it definitely would help out if uh, that momentum intensified. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and normally if you see like a move like this and you're like, oh my gosh, the stock went up 14%. This is amazing, right? But unfortunately for GameStop, 14% isn't very much, especially when you look at the price action over the past few days. Now, of course, there could be good intraday opportunities with that 14% move. I'm sure options were going crazy and stuff like that. But uh, as we know, Mike, the premiums are kind of jacked and it 
you know, uh, you need a you need a pretty large move with this stock, you know, to to see some pretty good gains. But nonetheless, it's always good to see the updates with Roaring Kitty's position. I know a lot of people are following GameStop, and I'm definitely on the side of that. I um, I'm hoping for a good recovery here. And the big thing is, we just really need more buyers to come in, right? Uh, there needs to be something to to like ignite the ignite that spark again. Hopefully, this uh, news with Roaring Kitty can kind of get it going. But I don't know, Mike. I think we're gonna need a little bit more than this in the short term. Yep, so we shall see. But Tom, looking into tomorrow, uh, what is the economic schedule looking like as well as the earnings calendar? Yeah, so there is the Michigan Consumer Sentiment preliminary data for June coming out at 10 a.m. Eastern. That does sometimes move the markets. There is a couple Fed speakers later in the day as well. For earnings, there's not really anything, Mike. It looks like we're free and clear on the earnings side of things. So the big thing is really just watching Tesla with that shareholder event tonight. I'm still wait, uh, watching news and uh, updates with that as it comes out. But, um, you know, heading into tomorrow, that, that's pretty much it besides the consumer sentiment. Sounds good. Uh, one thing is that Adobe did report earnings after the bell today, and it's definitely moving with some uh, crazy momentum. So keep a close eye on this one going forward as, uh, you know, it's one of those uh, earnings uh, pops that we're seeing. But either way, it's now about that time for the good stuff, which are some setups and predictions. A stock I'm continuing to watch very closely is PENN to the upside. I've been talking about this one quite a bit over the past week, and it just keeps on marching higher and it's been working in a great way so I'm not going to stop with it but either way looking at Penn right now uh, there was a recent big money play with this one that is uh, getting better and better by the day um, this stock has had some good news with it recently as well and the price action is just uh, strengthening at the same time the stock has been pretty oversold over the past couple of years so uh, some of this move can be shorts covering and then just general market participants buying the dip but either way the risk reward in the short term is pretty favorable in my opinion and I'm going to continue to look at this one in a bullish way not necessarily just for tomorrow but even like the next couple weeks. Yeah, this has been a pretty awesome move to the upside. I know a lot of people have been coming back to this big money play, and especially over the past few days, it's been really good for everyone that's been playing this one. So uh, let's give a shout out to Pen Mike. I actually like this one quite a bit for the longer term, but you know they have been uh, having a little bit of issues this year. So I'm glad to see him starting to come back up a little bit more in the short term. With my first play, I'm looking at Tesla. I told you guys that it was going to be one of my plays for today, and that we would definitely come back to here uh, if Tesla can end up rebreaking this resistance from intraday right around 186 tomorrow i will keep watching this one back to the upside and i'll look for a move towards 190 and then up into the key 200 dollars mark and if we bring up the book map you can see that 190 and 195 have a ton of sellers stacked up there and there's a lot even around 200 as well so heading into tomorrow mike i'm really going to be watching for that breakout and that push higher for tesla uh it was good news to see that shareholder event with elon once the market opened today there really wasn't too many opportunities opportunities that just sold straight off and went flat so I'm really looking for a better continuation tomorrow all righty another stock I'm watching pretty closely for tomorrow is Amazon and it is in a bearish way looking at Amazon it was definitely uh, relatively weak today and there was a good amount of selling pressure that came in early on uh, there's a lot of resistance overhead with this one especially around like this 190 level um, it is rejecting off of that area and we are starting to see it uh, you know pull back a good amount there's still a lot more that uh, it can pull back but a lot of that will depend on on the sentiment in the market as a whole. But either way, I will look at Amazon in a bearish way for tomorrow. And more important than anything else, I just want to see bearish flows in the market tomorrow. So that would mean just weakness overall. And just, uh, I guess you could just say, a good amount of pressure on the lows for Amazon to make this setup worth trading. If the market starts blasting to the upside, there's no point in shorting Amazon. However, if we do see some weakness come in, uh, this Amazon setup can uh, offer some good opportunities. So either way, Amazon's on my radar. Yeah, and we saw a move just like that this morning where the SPY was selling off pretty good, and Amazon ended up having a really good move to the downside, especially there in the middle of the day. So uh, that was a good move there by Amazon. I'll definitely keep it on the radar, Mike. With my next play, I'm looking at Starbucks. It was up 1% today. This is a bit of a slower stock, but sometimes the options can do pretty well with Starbucks. Um, it is dipping over the past few days, and I'm watching for it to come up off of this support. If it can re-break above like 80-80 tomorrow, I will watch it back up, but um, Mike, Starbucks has been having a pretty bad year. You know, if you go out to the daily chart, 
uh, that's looking pretty rough, right? Uh, especially in 2024, it's been selling off pretty crazily. And uh, on this little recovery here, it's been stair-stepping up very well. And today was like the very beginning of another stair-step back up. So I'm really kind of watching for that pattern back up here on the daily. All right, sounds good. Well, it's now about that time for today's Momentum Plays. And with the first one, we have Chewy to the upside. CHWY, Mike, you've talked about this one a lot. And it's really starting to pop off in the short term. If it breaks above 2370, I'll look for opportunities up. All right. With the next one, we have HIMS also to the upside. Hims and hers. What an interesting company, right? It's been popping off a lot lately. If it breaks above 2460 tomorrow, go ahead and look at the upside opportunities. All right. And then with the last one, we have SLV for both directions. Silver. Yeah, it's been uh, pretty crazy for silver the past couple weeks. If they break under 29 or sorry, 2595, then go ahead and look at it to the downside. If it re-breaks above 2690, then look at it up tomorrow. All right, sounds good. So looking at SLV, we have the downside level for a potential move lower. We have the upside level for a potential move higher. And then don't forget about Hims and Chewy for potential moves to the upside only if they break above the levels Tom listed. For these three stocks, we are looking for consistency and just power to the moves, right? We want to see strong, consistent price action. And the better the price action is, the better the setups reflexively become. Uh, if these stocks do not break the levels listed, there's no need to try and force a setup that's just not there. But either way, keep these three stocks on watch for tomorrow. And let's jump right into today's big money trade. And we are looking at ticker symbol GLNG. Today, the big money put just under half a million dollars into the GLNG 32 strike calls that expire on January 17th of 2025. GLNG is a liquefied natural gas company that has been uptrending in a pretty strong way over the past few years. Looking at the chart, it is getting closer and closer to a key breakout spot right around, you could say like this... Uh, uh, you can say like right around this like $29 area. There's a handful of levels that are uh, approaching with this one. And looking at the chart, like I said, it has been uptrending in a pretty consistent way. These call options have a good amount of time, which is always good to see. And the big money filled these call options pretty close to the low of day today, which is also another really good sign. One thing that is a little bit worrying with this one is that the call options are a decent amount out of the money as they are that 32 strike um, and the stock is only at $28 but overall uh, the risk reward with this one is good like I said the main risk is just the um, the strike price but either way I'll keep this one uh, on my radar yeah, I like it quite a bit. Uh, it's a very interesting setup. You know, the stock just blasted off from the bottom of that support around $20 and blasted all the way up to 30 So um, maybe they're trying to get in here as it's like dipping here in the short term today. But this does go out to January at 25 So just realize that there's going to be a little bit of time with this. Um, it could end up being cover calls too. So this is one that I don't think I would go too deep into. You know, like if we were talking about GLNG when it was down here around support, I might, um, you know, go a little bit deeper into it i'm definitely going to be on the or err on the side of caution with this one mike just given the uh the strike and how close it is to resistance all righty there we go but as we all know what there's one more day left of the week so let's make it count it's easy to look back at certain crazy moves this week like from apple and how some of its options increased by ten thousand percent and and to just wish you put your entire account into a play like that but uh Trades like that are not repeatable, and they are what they seem like. They're easy to look back on, but they're almost impossible to spot in real time. So heading into tomorrow, above all else, let's prioritize smart, disciplined, long-term oriented trading habits. Having stop losses, but even more importantly, sticking to them. Following the money, and then just trading, in, again, like I said, a disciplined, long-term oriented way. Um, before we close out, I do want to give a giant shout-out to 
someone who definitely traded in a good way today, and that is a PKO in the stocked up trading floor. Uh, he had uh, his biggest win ever on a single play, as we can see by his message today. He crushed it with crushed it with AVGO and uh, just hit it out of the park. So great job, PKO. Keep up all the great work. And as we uh, scroll through the profits channel, it was a pretty good day. And even SM Bot crushed it with some coin put options and uh, Dell call options and SMCI call options as well. Uh, if you guys are into short-term trading, definitely check out that first link in the description in the comments down below. Not only do you get access to all of our bots, but you get access to our big money trades, um, weekly live events. You could chat with Tom and myself all day long. And basically, you get access to every tool you would need for short-term trading. Uh, some of our surge bot plays today did pretty well. There were two of them. Uh, the Baidu one failed to break out, but the coin one Hit it out of the park as it popped up by 97% in a pretty consistent way as well. So if you want to join, it'll be that first link in the description and the comments down below. But besides that, thank you all so much for watching and let's end the week on a green note.